Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from John Merrill, KC5DBX, um, and uh, he has some very nice words and says he wants to mount a Diamond D130J discone antenna on his roof. Uh, discone antennas in the amateur world are usually built for two meters and up. Some of them have an element pointing up out the top that uh, can be used for six meters, but primarily they're good for two meters and up. A uh, discone antenna, let me show you what a discone antenna looks like. Okay, I'm going to show you what a discone antenna looks like. You have a pipe or something and the um, ground connection is put to several rods that come down like this and they go in a circle all the way around the thing. And then separate from that you have a top hat which is usually composed of rods like this. It can actually be a disc. This is the disc because it's flat. This is the cone because it's shaped like a cone. It's a conical section. This part up here is connected to the inner part of the uh, coax. So you've got your coax and uh, the inner shield, the inner conductor rather, goes to this part and the shield goes to this part. Now, the way these antennas work, and nobody has yet come up with a really satisfactory explanation. But they do work. They are broadband antennas. So they basically work from 140 or so megahertz and up. And there's no um, no theoretical upper limit but uh, I would say that you can go up, uh, you could probably do 70 centimeters on this. I don't know that you can do uh, 23 centimeters on this. You might need a smaller discone. Now, can discones be made bigger? Absolutely. There's a discone, or was a discone, at MacDill Air Force Base that uh, was for 40 meters and uh, used for all HF frequencies. And this way they could use whatever frequency they needed to to communicate with an airplane. But the discone antennas you get from ham radio are usually two meters and up. So you've got your disc up here, you've got your cone thing down here. Now if you put up a rod like this that's one quarter lambda for six meters, that would be a quarter of that, would be three, one and a half, 1.5 meters is um, quarter wave. They don't usually make them that big, but they'll work on a quarter wave. They'll work for receiving quite well. These are often used as scanner antennas uh, because they'll pick up all the frequencies above a certain range, so you can pick up your police fire, things like that, as long as they're not using encrypted trunking, which a lot of them are moving to. Um, now what he wants to do is have an HT, a dual band HT, and also receive with an SDR uh, connected USB to a laptop. Now it sounds like he's going to use one of the little dongles that uh, you plug into a USB there's an RF connector on the other side, and it's powered by the USB port. Um, I happen to use this right here as my, um, this is an SDR play. It's the RSP1A, which is their lowest uh, level. It's a very, very nice HF, and it goes up to two gigahertz microwave on the thing and it's just a delightful piece of equipment. If it looks like a black box, it is a black box. 
You do everything on the computer. And I've done a number of videos uh, using that, and I've done videos about the different uh, SDR Play radios. I would frankly suggest going with one of those. I know they're $100 for the entry level, but um, they still work very well. The dongles can be had for as low as 25 So what he wants to do is run the SDR radio and the... Um, and the transceiver and when it transceives he wants it to protect the SDR radio. So let's look back again here. Um, you've got an SDR radio, you've got a transmit device. You're going to transmit into here and when it comes in and receive it also goes here to the receive only. When you hit transmit this breaks that so that it only goes out this way. Now the problem with using a transceiver, a handheld transceiver, is that there's no convenient way to tell it you're transmitting, so you need a self-sensing uh, relay in here, and there's still going to be a short period of time that you're transmitting, and you're going to be transmitting right into that radio. Even if it's only for um, two milliseconds, okay, you can blow that radio sky high. So you're talking about a very difficult thing to do, to both transmit and receive through one antenna without a relay in here. Now, when I use the ICOM 7300 uh, to do that over here, there's um, a transmit connection on the back that can flip a relay so that I'll hear properly out of there. I would almost recommend a separate um, antenna for transmitting and, and another for, for transmitting and receiving and then another uh, antenna on this that's separate that'll really cut down the problems that you might have. Uh, so I would not recommend trying to do this with a handheld because you're going to get energy going in there until the system senses it and can throw the relay. Even a few milliseconds of sending 5 or 10 watts into one of those radios is enough to zap it. So uh, you can look around. Uh, I would call uh, DX Engineering and uh, see what they might offer. They might have something that can, for example, protect that, uh, that receiver for the first few milliseconds. Let's see, he was planning to run an Alpha Delta. Oh, he was talking about his lightning arresters and stuff like that. Um, he will be using batteries to do this, but that's not going to help with the problem I just laid out. He says, thank you so much for all your teaching and the information. Um, he's uh, very grateful for what I've uh, been doing. So, John, thank you for that. Giveaway number four is coming up. And this is giveaway number four right here. It's an antenna. It's an antenna by Alpha Delta. And it's uh, the model... Uh, DXEE and it has traps for 40 and 20 so it'll work on um, whichever half of the 40 meter band you select. You can select like the lower half so you can work FT8, you can select the upper half so you can do sideband. Then it covers all of 20, all of 15, and the important part of 10 meters. Okay, so it's got um, a uh, it's a fan dipole plus it's the trapped dipole. It's a very nice antenna. They're kind of pricey. It's built like a Sherman tank. It is very, very sturdy. It has another advantage. It is only 40 feet long and yet it will cover 40 meters. So, and it's got nice gray wire that's hard to see. 
Uh, this can be set up as an inverted V, even only 20 feet high, and so it'd be a great antenna in some HOAs that uh, will allow limited antennas, but not the great big ones. I kind of like this antenna. Uh, this was one of the antennas that I considered to be the reference station antenna, but because it only covered part of 40 meters, it was not selected. It's still a fine antenna. Um, here's how you enter. Send a postcard, QSL card, or a simple uh, envelope with a single sheet of paper in it. Send it to Dave Kassler, KE0OG, PO Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. Send to me the giveaway number, which is number four, giveaway number four. Okay, put your name, call sign, your the address to which you want this mailed, it'll come via United States Postal Service, uh, priority mail, and um, also include in there your phone number in case I need to get in touch with you. Now note that I do not need your uh, email or anything like that. Uh, after the drawing, all entries will be destroyed. So there you have it. If you would like to support this channel financially, you may do so by going to dcastler.com slash support. There are quite a few ways that you can use there. One of my favorite is Patreon. By becoming a patron on Patreon, uh, you support this channel with a monthly patronage. And it's a great way to uh, help the channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, quite a few people, people, close to 200, have chosen that way to support this channel. So until we next meet, 73.